We've reached the penultimate episode of Halo the series, and things are getting intense. What an episode this week. Can you believe they showed the... Wait a minute. I better stop there for a second because big stuff went down in season two, episode seven, and I can't talk about it without spoilers. So if you haven't seen this week's episode, reconnect with an old friend and watch it together. And then you better come back here for all the Halo goodness you can handle. Can I just tell you, this job is the best. Like today, I get to talk to Jen Taylor, who plays Cortana, and Charlie Murphy, who plays McKee. But first, AI is all the rage these days, and no matter how you feel about it in the 21st century, it's a lot more complicated in the 26th. At least Cortana is. And in season two, she's gotten a pretty big update. Here's a look at everything that went into creating Cortana 2.0. I summon you in the name of the Hierarch's voices of the gods. Next time, you can just push the little button there. Cortana? Dr. Halsey. Cortana is a huge presence in the season, even though we start the season with her having been taken out of his head. It's only been six months. And the season is partly about getting her back. You don't look so good. The most challenging VFX to be created in season two is the creature work. In addition, there is another one which is well known to the gamers and to the viewers of season one is the Cortana character. So the, the, the very slight redesign of her and her hair make it a little bit more modern. We came to conclusion that this time we actually gonna shoot actress in situ and then add a treatment to her so she looks like a holographic projection. I think this is probably as much as you want. We designed special LED rig which gives us that interactive light. We were trying to add a little bit more kind of organic feel and a little bit more human nature to Cortana or manifestation of Cortana, because really that's what it is. It's not a being, but it's just a manifestation of the AI. Will I be remembered? How could we forget? I am just so excited to be talking to Cortana herself, Jen Taylor today. Jen, it is so good to see you. Oh, it is my pleasure to be here, Sydney. Thanks for having me back. So let's jump right into it. I mean, you've been associated with Cortana since the beginning. So how has your performance evolved from the game to the series? It's changed drastically, right? We started just in studio in a booth. We were just doing our best to create these, to create this beautiful story. And after that, things started to evolve. We started to do performance capture. Uh, and I believe that was in Halo 4, we started to do really do performance capture. So then I was on a set, you know, working uh, in, in, PCAP, in a PCAP suit um, physically. So it's cha it changed technically. And then with the TV show um, in the first season, doing motion capture on a TV set. And then this last season was in completely different in itself. Master Chief. Master Chief. Where are you? I'm right here. You need to get up. But the pressure has definitely mounted throughout just to keep doing honor to this character that I love so much. Let's talk about Halo the series now. What can you tell me about Cortana's story arc through the first six episodes of season two? She's in a really different place, isn't she? Then we last, you know, then the end of season one. She is having to play all sides in a really dangerous situation, which is enjoyable to play. And also difficult. Like, how do you, mm -hmm. how do you play duplicitousness? And I'm really curious to see how it all how it all lands. Well, we all are too. I don't know how much you can <laughs> indulge us. How much clarity does Cortana have in terms of what side she's on and what her duty is? I think the thing that's interesting about this, her experience this season is that she's been minimalized, if you will, by the UNSC. But yes, I think she's getting a real glimpse of the, quote, enemy 
there's that moment when she's walking around the ship. So this is a covenant ship, just downloading all of that information, right? Like she is just tapping into it all, I have to believe. What's her thoughts on the separation from Halsey during this period of time? We only get to see her once with that moment so far with Halsey where she tells her to run. So clearly there is some loyalty still there. Mm -hmm. You know, this is her... This is truly her mama, if you will. So in season one, John and Cortana were so intertwined. And now in season two, they're both floundering in a way without the other. Do you feel like John and Cortana are soulmates? Their best attributes highlight or, or make up for the deficiencies of the other. That's how I've always felt about these characters. And he is her first you know, sort of step into understanding humanity. He's her bridge to that. And that is difficult to be without. I think she's suffering. Well, Jen, thank you so much for coming by. It has been so much fun to get into the mind of Cortana and into your mind. Um, I know I speak for so many people when I say thank you for giving us Cortana all these years. Oh, thank you. It's been my honor and pleasure. Here I go. Anybody. When I arrived, McKee was the character who I engaged with first. It was a very quick turnaround of a design for her. There was this idea that she would have a bit of a warrior feel. Also, there's sort of something a little bit ceremonial about her as well. But this fabric was the key, and this idea of it being something that was over her head, but also would sort of sit down. And then this bodice over the top with strong design lines is what gives it the warrior feel. It was a way of getting this idea of having something that looks like it's protective and armoured, but actually it's a soft fabric that we can sew. McKee and the Master Chief are inseparably connected, and after this week's episode, it seems like things between them are really reaching a boiling point. Fortunately, I'm here with McKee herself, Charlie Murphy, to sort it all out. Charlie, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. So let's talk about McKee, a really elusive, even mysterious character. Can you talk about your experience playing her over the last two seasons? I mean, I think I've likened her before to, to being, you know, this cult member or like a former cult member. That, I feel, was like a perfect jumping off point for how to explore what her life has been and how her behavior has been affected by her upbringing. So I think that was like very rich, fertile ground to start playing McKee or, you know, seeing how she she kind of operates. Um, of course, she she grows from from series one and, and you'll see in this series too, she's like evolving and I don't know if it's for better or for worse. Very rich, rich kind of character to, to learn. And speaking of rich, you've had a lot of practice speaking Sengili. How, are you fluent? How do you make it look so easy? <laughs> Uh, I wish I was fluent. I feel like I put in enough hours to almost be fluent, but I'm definitely not. Um, and I suppose that, I mean, the language is just so fun to, to conquer. You know all about David Peterson. He's just incredible. Uh, and again, this year has just given me just such gorgeous language to to play and to to act and it's it's so it's so melodic to me. So talk about McKee's relationship with Master Chief. I mean, it's had a lot of ups and downs. How does McKee really feel about him? She really does see him as a kind of a twinning soul in in his experience even though very very different kind of terribly the same at the same time. So I I I feel like that that's a real soft spot for her. They don't decide. The ring doesn't belong to them. It belongs to us. She is quite fixated on trying to bring him around to her way of thinking. So there's definitely, he is a source of frustration also, but also this source of, of hope, this, this very, you know, 
real touchstone of, of you know, hope where she, she could live a sort of a normal life after everything she's been through. Well, on the flip side of things, let's talk about behind the scenes a little bit. Um, a lot sure. of your scenes included mocap actors. So tell me about working with them. And I don't know, what are the challenges of acting opposite a creature that you can't actually see? It is such a such a fun and funny experience. <laughs> Dealing with people on stilts, which sound like crutches, so we have to ADR some some stuff, definitely. And they always have this, you know, they're always taller than than they are, so they have you know that extra that extra bit with you know a tennis ball hanging off it. So, so many times I'm like giving this impassioned speech to to someone's face, and they're like, no, 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 no. like oh yeah, I need to look up higher. I gotta say, McKee's wardrobe this season. Very chic. What were some of your favorite costumes to wear this season so far? Oh, uh, yeah. It's been a fun year for her for her gear, for sure. I, I really love some of the more kind of molded armor that she wears. That was quite fun. I mean, you can't really bend down in it that much. So it is restrictive, but it definitely helps get into character. We have one episode left this season. Can you describe the season finale in three words? pretty bloody epic. Well, Charlie, thanks for taking the time to come by. This was such a fun chat. It was good to see you. You too. You too. Have a great day. In this week's episode, Halsey, Miranda, and Quan pay a visit to some ancient Forerunner ruins. Since the Forerunners are a major part of Halo lore, we've declassified their inclusion in season two's story and how the creative team brought them to life. Check it out. An invitation to unlock the full potential of our species. We find in our story that Onyx isn't quite what it seems. It's actually in law, a forerunner built planet. We get our first taste in this season of forerunner structures themselves. I know that we've seen the artifact of certain forerunner relics in the first season. We saw a little bit of the hard light structure that all of the fans of the game will recognize. We're starting to dive deeper into that in this season with a more expansive view of some of the forerunner elements. And these are architectural relics and ruins within the base of this planet. The cipher isn't just mathematical. It's also linguistic. And then we step out and onto this bridge made of hard light, which is also something that's been seen in the game plenty of times. Something that we get to realize this time as part of our drama. The main challenge is that, you know, our characters enter Forerunner Ruins, which activates a hard light bridge. Are you coming or not? What was very important to us to figure out how we're gonna actually create the interactive light of the actors when they step on it we came up with this plexiglass bridge structure, which is lit with sky panels from underneath, and that's what creates this beautiful, very soft, very diffuse light on the actors. In post, we'll be absolutely erasing that rig and replacing this with a CG hard light bridge. And within that, we open the door. But at the end of the scene, the bridge starts deactivating, forcing our characters to run back. Get out! Go! That's quite challenging to synchronize the performance of the actors with the animation of those lights. We take very seriously. We want to make sure that those things are working for fans of the game. Three, two, one! Is Halo not the best? Seriously. Thank you for hanging out with me here on Declassified and a very big thank you to Jen Taylor and Charlie Murphy for a couple of incredible chats. There's one episode left. I know, I know. But believe me when I tell you, the season finale is going to be huge. There are a ton of twists and turns and some epic surprises. And next week, Fiona O'Shaughnessy, who plays Lara, and executive producer Kiki Wolfkill will be here to dive into the season finale and examine it from every angle. And in case you're not already hyped for next week's episode, I've got an exclusive preview to share with you right now. Enjoy it, and I'll see you next time on Halo the Series Declassified. Master Chief, do you copy? It is of critical importance that you reach the Halo first. This was always a one-way ticket. Don't let it be for nothing. Will he come? You simulate everything. Not about him. I can't. Master Chief, why have you stopped? If you don't get to the Halo, 
all these sacrifices will be for nothing. Right 